Ahoy hoy, I'm Sarmandan, and today... Takeover procedure failed, system error 33, unrecognized video quality, 720p. Ugh. Oh hey Sarmandan, what are you doing? I'm just covering for you. Oh, uh, thank you. By the way, I did go and see NASA and they said that it had nothing to do with my upgrades, it was just that I had glandular fever, so that... Wait, where did Simon Dan go? Huh. Anyway, I've got to make a video, so what's been going on when I've been gone? Uh... Oh. Oh. Huh. That's way worse than... Glandular fever. Righty then. Ahoy hoy, I'm Planet Walk, and welcome to a new thing that I'm doing. I'm calling it a rational take, at least for now. And it's where I take a look at a subject that may be considered controversial and try and have a rational take on it. Or at least a take that I think is rational because there will always be those people that disagree. Anyway, today I'm going to be looking at coronavirus because everybody is losing their mind over it. In fact, by the time this video releases, New Zealand will be in lockdown, meaning that I can't go and see friends. If I had friends. Now one of the things that I see a lot of people on the internet ask is, is coronavirus really a cause for concern? Do people really need to be worried about it? And it's a somewhat complicated answer. However, there are some questions that we can ask to see if you should be worried about the novel coronavirus. Question 1. Do you have an underlying health condition? Question 2. Are you over 65 years of age? Question 3. Do you actually care about other people? And question 4, would you rather just not get sick in general? If you answered yes to any of those questions, then yeah, you should be worried. That being said, DO NOT PANIC! I repeat, DO NOT PANIC! You see, as much as many people would like to disagree, the coronavirus does not necessarily mean that it is the end of human civilization. Although, with the amount of morons out there, it might seem like it is. In other words, do not panic buy stuff. I went to the store to get some baked beans, and all they had was Watties baked beans and spaghetti in a can, but nobody likes spaghetti in a can, hence why they had spaghetti in a can. And not only is Watties more expensive than other brands, it's also a smaller can. What's up with that? And one of the problems with panic buying is the panic buying paradox. So let's say you decide, okay, I'm going to panic buy, because if I don't panic buy, then by the time I go and actually get supplies, there's going to be nothing left. However, if you do panic buy, then you're feeding into the panic buying that would mean that there's nothing left for other people. If you have enough food in your cupboard and freezer to last you a month, you do not need to panic buy. There are some people that can only afford enough food for a week and by panic buying some of the really cheap food, like baked beans, they are put at a disadvantage because, oh, they can't afford as much food to last them that next week, so they might have to go a little bit hungrier than normal. But fortunately, I'm not too affected by panic buying myself. It's just a bit annoying when you've got to buy the more expensive baked beans that have less in them for toasty pies. Although, if you want to help me uh, eat, you can always support me on Patreon, shameless self-plug, because uh, eating is something that I kind of need to do. Although, you also need to eat to be able to watch my videos, so don't support me if you're financially struggling yourself. I mean, I could always probably auction this off and get, I don't know, $500? That is not a joke. Message me if you'd like to buy overpriced TP for your bunghole. So what else is there when it comes to the coronavirus? What? People are panic buying guns? I'm not sure that people realise that this is the coronavirus. This is not the zombie apocalypse. Alright? Glad we've got that one sorted. But now it's time to talk about the other people. The people that say, this is fine. This group of people ranges from people that think that the coronavirus is a complete made up hoax to people that think that, you know, it's only got a 2% death rate so how bad can it really be, you know? So let me make one thing very clear. The coronavirus is not a hoax. The coronavirus is absolutely real. There would be way too many people needed to cover up a conspiracy like the coronavirus. So yeah, let's just not go there, shall we? 
Now let's move on to the coronavirus only has a 2% death rate which isn't that bad because Ebola had a 50% death rate. This argument is very, very stupid. So first things first, if you look at just the death rate, of course COVID-19 isn't going to seem nearly as bad as Ebola because COVID-19 has a lower death rate compared to Ebola, but that's not the only factor in play. How infectious a disease is is very important. The fact that coronavirus is far more infectious than Ebola means that it is far more dangerous than Ebola. It's kind of hard for a disease to kill someone that it hasn't infected, so yeah. Infectiousness is important. And another point to be made, and listen up Anthony Riley, is that the numbers that we have now aren't necessarily 100% reliable. Just because there are reports of it having a 2% death rate or a 4% death rate does not mean that that is the 100% set in stone death rate. One of the worst things that you can do is take all the confirmed cases of coronavirus then divide it by the amount of deaths due to coronavirus. That is bound to give you a skewed number. This is because of two reasons. The first being that not everybody that has been tested positive for the coronavirus has recovered. This is very important because a lot of the people that currently have the coronavirus will die from it. But on the other hand, you may have people that have the coronavirus that haven't been tested that wouldn't be a part of the data. So all in all, if you're trying to make an argument of oh the death rate is only 2% or oh the death rate is only 4% or oh the death rate is 15%, you are making an argument using incomplete information. But to be fair, you could use these rates as an estimate just as long as you are aware that there are variables that are unaccounted for. But then there is an argument that is so mind-numbingly idiotic and stupid that it just baffles me that people think that it's a good argument. I mean, how can anyone with a functioning brain think that hundreds of thousands of people die to influenza every year, whereas only 10,000 people have died due to coronavirus, therefore coronavirus is not as bad as the flu. That's not a good argument. This argument is so bad that you only need to look back a month or two to when only a hundred people had died outside of China and people were making this exact argument except instead of comparing it to the flu they were comparing it to Ebola, they were comparing it to SARS. It's almost like people somehow think that the numbers that we've got now will just be the numbers forever. It's like they think that viruses don't infect new people for some strange reason. Does coronavirus when going to infect a new people go, okay, have I killed 20,000 people yet? Nope, I've got to kill 20,000 people, then I'm going to stop because some random dude on the internet says that coronavirus only kills 20,000 people. Right. Is that how it works? I hope so, but I don't think that's how it works. And just as an added note, it's really weird how people are judging the severity of coronavirus by how many people it kills. Because, you know, it's like that having other effects from the disease aren't bad or something. I mean, I don't know about you, but I don't like having the flu. The flu is a very big inconvenience to me. Apart from me actually caring about other people's health and well-being, my other concern about the coronavirus is if I get it, I'm not going to enjoy that very much. But as depressing as it may seem, you've got people that are absolutely losing their minds, you know, buying guns because they think that it's a zombie apocalypse somehow. You've got morons that think that it's nothing to worry about or that it's a hoax. There is some hope. One of the big memes that has been going around is flatten the curve. And no, we're not talking about flat earthers here. I know I brought up Anthony Riley, but he's got nothing to do with this. The idea is very simple. Wash your bloody hands. Also, avoid touching your face and avoid touching other people as well. I don't get why you'd want to touch other people, but you know, each their own, I guess. Another thing is avoid social interactions. There's this great thing called the internet, or if you're a bit more old school, the telephone, which you can talk to other people through without actually having to see them in person. It's great, isn't it? And if you're in New Zealand, by the time this video is up on YouTube, New Zealand will be under lockdown. And for the love of God, don't screw it up. Right? Does anyone remember back to primary school where they had to wait 15 minutes after class because there was that one kid that couldn't shut up? And so everybody else suffered because of it. Don't be like that one kid. 
Currently, I think the lockdown is supposed to only go for something like four weeks or one month, right? Don't make it two months, goddammit! And lastly, one of the interesting things about the coronavirus is it's brought up a lot of discussion and debate around certain topics. For example, one person actually messaged me the other day about UBI. And we had had a discussion last year about UBI where I told them, hey, there's this thing that people are talking about called UBI. And, you know, I'm a little bit skeptical of UBI. I don't know if it can work. It could work, maybe. I don't know. But they thought that UBI was something that would never work, ever. They thought that it was impractical. But now, this person is thinking, hey, this could potentially be a solution to some of the struggles that people are going through. They're still skeptical, they don't know if it's practical or not, but a lot of people have been making some good arguments for it lately. But of course, there's also the discussions about free healthcare. There's also the discussions about if this is what late stage capitalism looks like and, you know, all that stuff. Now, I'm not going to say whether any of this is good or bad or not. I just think that it's very interesting how a lot of these political issues that I've been hearing about for years have now been brought to the centre of everyone's attention and now everyone is debating whether they're good or bad. But anyway, leave a like and subscribe if you like this video. Leave a comment letting me know what other topics you'd like me to talk about in a rational take because I do have some topics but they're going to piss everyone off. As always, a big shout out to my $20 or more patrons. The Sun Express, what Jesus, Holmes, Hugh Jars, MC Nutkin, Wolfie, Stringer News One, Ash Panash, Curtis Reynolds, Kirby New Yorker, and Sisyphus. If you want to support me financially, you can do so on Patreon. Link will be in the description. But anyway, I will see you in the next video. Between you and me, thank you for watching.